Hello, hello, my name is Troy Aru here. I'm Tyler Hoskins. And you're listening to our Sick Ass Podcast. Right, kia ora, kia ora, and we are here with another in-guest episode of the Sick Ass Podcast. Now, just to preface this, we are in the den of Propel Fitness, the home of, or one of the homes of our guest here. Uh, so if you hear some barbells dropping, you hear some people getting pretty excited, some skipping going on, some music, all of that stuff, we just need to say sorry, uh, but that's just what we're dealing with here. So. Our guest today, he's been someone that I've known for quite a few years now. I met him first about, oh gosh, that was about eight years ago now. Yeah, I'd say um, so. At the School of Physical Education, Sport and Exercise Science. And from there, kind of drifted apart and then something has brought us back together to actually discuss what he's been up to. So we're going to talk a little bit about his Performance Academy, a little bit about the philosophy behind the training that he's been doing. But today, ladies and gentlemen, we have our man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Fisherman, Marty McKenzie. <laughs> That's a heck of an intro. Uh, thank you very much, Troy, for having me in the Sick Ass Podcast. Real, uh, real talk though. No, honestly, I love, I love what you guys are doing. Um, I really appreciate the content you're putting out there, the value you add to what you do, and the awareness that you're creating. I. I Hats off, man. That's it's beautiful. Man, I appreciate that. And just uh, for our visual people out there, you can see there is a bit of a power differential going on. I've given him the bigger seat today, so uh, yeah, he's the guest. We'll make sure he's feeling nice and mighty. So, first thing I want to talk about today, actually, Marty, is um, so before we get into what you've been up to, uh, I just need to address in all of your videos, you're mostly barefoot. Now, mm. uh, obviously, so just preface this once again, I bias towards barefoot training, but why is it that you, like, that's something that's not kind of seen in common commercial gyms, unless people are deadlifting or something, but you tend to do most of your training barefoot. Yeah. Uh, if you want to give a little spiel about that. All right, well, in a way, you almost are holding yourself back while you're in a shoe. Mm. Although a shoe does serve a purpose for uh, protection of the foot, it also alters our natural gait pattern and how we should be moving naturally. Um, you know, we weren't, we weren't born in shoes, um, and when we're coming into natural raw environment, like in the wild, um, it's very good to move naturally. Mm. Um, sounds a little bit silly to say. There is a health and uh, safety approach to it, which is, you know, you know, good practice, very good. But if you can get into wearing your feet as much as you as possibly can, you know, whether that be around your house, um, in the garden, watch out for thistles and all that of course, um, do as much as possible. So the idea is that we are strengthening our body as a whole and we often neglect the foot or the ankle. Um, so if we can strengthen our base of support and our connection to the ground which is our foot, uh, which also acts as a, res a sensory awareness um, mechanism, that will allow us to build a stronger structure mm. going further up the, up the body. Interesting. I mean, I know during the time of the lockdown, I spent a lot more time at home and I like just decided to be a bit more barefoot. And I know that in that time, uh, when I did even just put a sock on or like put a shoe back on, I was like, man, like my foot got so used to actually just being outside of that um, for so long. Now, I just, while we're on the barefoot topic, you put up a really good post and you were discussing the best footwear um, for different types of training so mm. like what would you recommend then if you know you if you can't be in a gym where you have to uh, wear shoes yeah. what would you kind of uh, recommend as the proper footwear or a better footwear for training yeah like match what feels comfortable for you is always best but what you find or what your perception of comfort is is probably may or may not be the best for the situation so if you cannot go barefoot um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of options out there. We also, what you got to look at what are you doing? Mm. Um, if you're a runner, yeah, there's no point running in big clogs or you know skate shoes. It's not going to be very practical. If I'm in the gym just lifting weights and shifting some tin, then finding a flat sole shoe mm. or a shoe that has a wider fit. If I have a wide foot, is more preferable. I personally enjoy a Van over a Converse. Because when I look at the bottom of a Converse shoe, it is a very narrow sole. Mm. And when I look at my shoe, my, my foot is not that narrow. So why would I put my foot inside that? Mm. You think about uh, your foot in a shoe, if you were to spread your hand out, that is almost quite similar to how our foot should be. It should be gripping the ground as we go. If we were to put our fingers together, we're 
getting, uh, we're not able to use our hand, mm. essentially. It's the same as our foot. If we put our, shoe, our foot into a shoe uh, and our, ha- our sh- foot isn't able to move correctly, then it um, doesn't really serve as a proper function Absolutely. for what we're trying to achieve. Mm. Yeah. I personally like uh, Vibrams. Yeah. The toe shoes that everyone kind of thinks are a bit creepy and a bit weird looking. Yeah, I can see the point there. Um, they are not the most stylish or fashionable shoe, but they do serve a purpose in that overall they were great for the gym. Mm. If you're going to go outside day to day, you know, find yourself a comfortable flat sole shoe and anything, you know, if it's relative to what you can do, it has to serve a purpose. Mm. Yeah, yeah, well, um, I think when we start putting aesthetics over anything, so like everything that we do to make something look cool, mm. it's probably not going to serve its best function because most of uh, what we see as beauty or today's standard of beauty is kind of based off like a very broken model. For example, when you're talking about the more narrow shoe like the Converse, uh, that's like based on a broken foot because as you said, it's starting to like squeeze all those toes together and once something uh, goes out of its natural alignment, we are then basing something off a broken structure. So I appreciate that and I do like your sentiment <coughs> of finding something that does feel comfortable with you. But I also uh, like the sentiment of getting very close, uh, as close as we can to our natural environment. So yeah, being barefoot gives us you know, that. So is there anything that you prefer when you are like, getting outdoors? There's a grounding aspect to it. There's, uh, there's more things than just being barefoot and being natural. Like, it connects you to the sensory aspect of your foot. It connects you to the earth and your surrounding, your environment that you're in. So there's a bit more of a um, present feel mm. to it as well. So you're engaging with your environment. Um, if you are open to that sort of thing, it's very, very valuable. Regardless if you're not open to it, I suggest you, you get open to it and uh, <laughs> get it done. Mm. Um, yeah. So there's some practical things that, so say someone who's mm. just spent their entire lives, you know, indoor, in the warm, uh, always had a really like cushy shoe or even cushy socks. How would you kind of get someone into going from that into exposing themselves to that? Right, um, th- there's many things you can do. The first thing is simply just get your shoes off. But in terms of uh, kind of physical exercises or approaches, we can appro- get into it. Um, something I like to do is release a little bit of fascia. fascia uh, plantar fascia mm. or the bottom of the foot so simply standing on a PVC pipe or get a golf ball or a tennis ball mm. you roll the bottom of your foot onto the tennis ball uh, which releases a lot of tension and stress that is will possibly be aligned there from the years of abuse of being in a shoe mm. um, get the play around it sounds silly but play around with your toes you know yeah you gotta manually potentially get your fingers in there, move around your toes. So your toes aren't stuck in one position. They do have small joints in there that we often forget how to use. And often the big toe is a uh, major problem and more common than not in a lot of uh, sp- a lot of sports yeah. um, practices. So that comes down to quadruple extension. A lot of people think triple extension of the ankle, knee and hip is a big thing. Mm. But you know that the ankle isn't the, the base of our support. It then comes down to the big toe and then in the foot. Mm. So if we can strengthen, strengthen everything from the ground up, you can just imagine the benefits and the physical application that will come from that. That's a really good segue into... So the reason why I brought this up is just to show you that Marty isn't really just thinking of the superficial stuff that most trainers do start to think about, where if we're trying to increase someone's sprint time, for example, we look at like uh, what we can produce in the end. We're not actually looking at the foundation. So I saw the type of stuff that you've been getting into with Performance Academy, and I see that as an approach for you approaching building a stronger foundation so that most of these people can uh, start to specify as they're going forward with any uh, I guess journey that they have in their lives so mm-hmm. if you want to just touch on uh, what the pers- uh, the performance academy is and then yeah. we can just get into that a little more yeah it's a bigger picture that it's not just coming in terms of coming to the gym lifting weights there's a lot more to life than shifting tin mm. uh, there's different aspects so we've got our physical mental spiritual and emotional aspects within us um, and we can tie different aspects into our training in that. Um, in terms of the Performance Academy, we're not trying to, you know, my goal is to help an athlete be the best athlete they can be by providing them certain tools, mm. but the ultimate goal is to um, help people be better humans. Mm. That is the ultimate goal. Um, sport is a very, you know, although we love it, um, and, you know, people are very driven towards making that their life achievement, 
there is that's a can be a very small aspect in terms of the whole picture of your life mm. um, so with the performance academy what we're trying to do is yes we are trying to allow or help athletes be become better athletes but we're taking small aspects into every uh, method or training out there or different aspects into different um, practices out there and trying to create an optimal program that is best suited for the individual mm. um, so we incorporate a lot, of, a lot of things that get neglected are kind of more spiritual things that people don't think. People just come and do the physical stuff and that's it. Mm. Um, we're trying to incorporate a little bit more mental aspect into it, a little bit more spiritual aspect into it, um, get people to understand more about themselves mm. and kind of center themselves with their training as well. Uh, to me, I find it interesting that people don't do this more often. Um, I've gained personally huge value in it. People who I've talked to who do similar approaches have also gained huge value in it. The more I can connect for myself and f become more self-aware, mm. the better I will perform. Mm. Um, there's a bigger picture to it and if we can you know, focus on the body as a whole and the different aspects of mental, physical, emotional and uh, spiritual, it's, it changes the game up and it's, it's it's awesome, man. I, I love it. Mm. So you're building the entire individual. We're not just building their physical or mental capacity, which are the two things in sport we're mostly talking about. We're talking about how strong or fast someone is, or we're talking about mental grip. But you're actually talking about people who can understand themselves uh, to better apply themselves in the future, which is awesome. Now, you touched on the spiritual aspect. Now, most things I have kind of uh, seen over the years, when they talk about spirituality, it's always kind of just pigeonholed uh, as Eastern philosophies are kind of like tending towards yoga. So like, yes, yoga is a really good movement practice uh, and it is based in Eastern philosophy and then people do start to tie that in with a lot of spirituality. But what is kind of your sense of spirituality and how are you trying to uh, get these people to connect more uh, with that aspect? Yeah. I always struggled with this one when I was younger because when someone asked me what are your spiritual beliefs, mm -hmm. to me I always looked at it as, well, I relate it to religion. religion yeah. I didn't really associate myself in any, I thought being spiritual was to be religious. Mm. Um, laugh if you want, that's just how I, how I was thinking and what my knowledge was of mm. spiritual at the time. Um, to me spiritual is, is, is you. You are, we all made up these little aspects and we all have a little part of it so morals, values, um, what you choose to believe, truth is truth whether you, whether to, whether you believe it or not um, but not necessarily is always uh, the right thing to do in the given moment. Right. Um, yeah, it, it's self-awareness. It, I'm constantly exploring, um, trying to grow. It's, it's very... You know, it's very centering mm. being kind of, you know, people say spiritually awaken, you know, mm. spiritually awaken is also to be present in the given moment. Um, you know, live in the present moment, live in it. And when you start to tap into that, into the, not more into the internal than the external, you know, you start to relax a lot more, mm. um, you get a more sense of feel mm. and you just, to me, I feel more enlightened when I do a lot of my day-to-day -day activities, uh, whether it be for a small part of my day or a big part of the day, or you know, even potentially even once every month or week, mm -hmm. I have these certain moments where I just feel really grounded um, and you know, thankful, humbled to be the in the situation I'm in, and that all comes down to your spiritual believing, I believe. Yeah, so you're taking the spiritual away from being uh, solely just your religion. You're actually being in touch with yourself and then I guess by the sounds of things how you relate to like the world and then how you relate to every other being around you as well yeah that, that's my give on that's my take on it you know it may change in the future um, it's all about just learning growing mm. um, and, and developing yeah well that's definitely something I mean, hindsight's powerful, right? Uh, if I could go back to teenage me and tell myself that we're not just focusing on being like physically the best that we can be, and if I had a bit more, I guess, awareness of myself back then, I wouldn't have done a lot of stupid stuff that I did, or I would have just been a bit more, I guess, maybe 
giving myself a little bit more slack for a lot of the stuff that I was doing uh, because I was still just discovering. Now, discovering myself was something that, oh, sorry, discovering yourself, every oneself, mm-hmm. is something that I took the most though from your talk about the Performance Academy. Uh, so what is the common age group that you are working with? So I'm targeting youth. Um, and the idea for that is that they are the most vulnerable age you know they're in a situation where they're just kind of still potentially still trying to figure themselves out there's a lot of information out there in the world and my goal is simply just to help guide them uh, and you know help them in any way I can and through that um, targeting sporting performance Mm. I'm just going to incorporate what I believe um, uh, to be a a better approach Mm. and strength and conditioning as well as a lot of other aspects so uh, at that age group there's kind of that's when they start to develop from moving from multiple sports down into specifying into one sport now usually what happens is we're going to have people who are left behind Mm -hmm. and I feel like this is an avenue that you're trying to get into so just talk a little bit more about that yeah I 100% man I uh, I believe there's a lot of individuals or athletes out there who miss out on the opportunity to get involved in their program or some kind of setup that allows them to keep learning and growing to the, so they can get better towards the, achieving their end goal. Um, for example, there's only a, cer- a certain amount or a select amount of people who have the opportunity to get involved in representative academies or representative teams. With that, they miss out on, or if they uh, miss out on the cut, uh, due to either you know multiple reasons, maybe a preference of a coach, they're a late maturer, um, or a selection process isn't the thing, or they're simply just being overlooked. They miss out on the like, trainings, education, uh, and valuable knowledge that will help them get better towards their end goal. Mm-hmm. So my, our goal of Performance Academy is to allow those individuals, all ages, all abilities, to have the opportunity to be better and get that. Right, so this would be something that you see that runs parallel to your regular academies? Uh, Quite similar, but I, I believe I can perform, uh, or do it at a better level. And that's not being cocky or arrogant. I just think I'm picking up on other aspects that they're missing out on, as well as you know, if you have to have you know a group of a group of individuals, and say only three of those individuals out of the ten get chosen to go further towards this development of the sporting career, mm. not necessarily all three of those people are going to make it. What about you know the the four to ten? Mm mentally they are ready they want it um they have a, a more hunger for it mm. they potentially just haven't given the opportunity to go for that so i'm catering for everyone but i'm really targeting those four to ten those individuals who um are not getting the opportunity cool and so for those who aren't getting the opportunity um now it sounds like you take a very multifactorial approach, right? So we're not just getting in them and then making them better sports people, you're making them better uh, humans in general. So um, with this, how do you see kind of the like key successes for the people that are coming in and what do you expect or what do you hope that it is that they take away from you know being part of this academy? Yeah, so longevity is huge in anything that we do. We want to be able to do what we love for longer. Um, yes, we do get into the nitty gritty of lifting heavy tin we get into the hard work we put in you know we put in the hours it's not just all about you know breathing and meditation that's a very small part of it what i'm saying is there's more to more to it than just coming in and lifting tin we're trying to help you be the best you can be mm. and with that comes a lot of other aspects that people miss out on mm. uh, yeah yeah well i guess that age as well is also they're, they're very moldable I remember the kind of shift in me from you know getting new role models, getting you know, hanging with the wrong people sometimes. Mm, but you know, 100%. I kind of I was in that age where I was trying to discover what it is I actually wanted to do, who I wanted to be. So, how is it that I mean, it, I would say the word is vulnerable. It's a very vulnerable age for yeah. these people to either make it or break it, as they say. So, um, how do you? try to like incorporate maybe because it's mostly males right yeah yeah majority of males so how is it that you're trying to facilitate that i guess that transition from you know boyhood into manhood really Mm. so is there anything that you've thought about with that like you said you become your environment in a way who you hang out with what your circle is 
what you surround yourself with mm -hmm. you slowly pick up those traits those characteristics and you tend to become what you're surrounded by mm -hmm. um, we're trying to create an environment that allows people to achieve those things by incorporating what we feel mm -hmm. will help them or help them learn or mm -hmm. achieve what they want to achieve mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like not life lessons but it's almost like teachings we want to provide to allow them to learn themselves you know there's no point in me giving you something you need to learn for yourself to get a sense of feel and understanding for it mm. we often don't understand or relate to things that other people have gone through until mm. we go through it ourselves mm. um, that, that's of a lot of uh, you can apply that to many other things mm. but essentially what I'm trying to say is uh, yeah we're just trying to create the best environment we can mm. for the individual so you've talked about longevity you've talked about you know sustainable practice and by the sounds of things you're trying to provide uh, the resources for these people to mm. be better but they you want I guess your key is that they're going to be able to take it and run with it at some point now yeah. um, you, just something you're very passionate about I can see it I can feel it and we've talked about it before um, but what so what to you is the like particular interest like why is it that this is where you wanted to target because I know you've done a little bit of background work mm. um, so if you can just explain a little bit about that my whole uh, there's many reasons but I think my whole passion uh, behind it and that what really drives me regardless if it succeeds or not it's something I'm always going to strive to uh, create and do better um, is you know, I was once that kid yeah. you laugh if you want that's all good um, you know I mentally whether I succeeded or not you know I just wanted the opportunity to get better I think that's what my big thing was I, want, I was sick of being overlooked mm. um, you know by certain individuals or not just given a chance like regardless if you if you make it or not I just want an opportunity to be better for myself and that's just the nature of everything that we're doing here so quick interruption but we're back into it so Marty prior to this was talking about being that kid uh, and being able to provide for them so if we want to pick up where we mm. were yeah like uh, <coughs> yeah I've got to reset myself into that one yeah uh, yeah man I was once that kid I um just wanted an opportunity to grow get better and uh, I struggled to find a academy or some kind of program that would allow me to do that look in all aspects and with going through the experience uh, and now not learning what I've learning going through the PE degree getting experience and what I'm passionate about I've then just molded what I believe to be a suitable program but also it, within that it's going to grow itself you know this for me this is the only beginning stages of my own business and what I want to achieve I've got a lot of me ideas that I want to go with it. Mm. Uh, it just all takes time. Yeah. So um, before we get into the specifics of what the Performance Academy actually provides, so we've got the idea of the philosophy, but now uh, something that I think a lot of us who are getting into the space, who you know have all of this knowledge and all of this experience of how to train people, how to facilitate uh, environments for people to actually get more active. Um, that's great, but we're never really given the actual model to run it as a business. So how's like that's also something else that's now been thrown upon you. Mm. So yes, you can provide the, uh, you can facilitate the areas, you can facilitate the environment, uh, you can get the people together, but then the extra little like additional add-on has now been business. So how yeah. have you been finding that as well? Yeah, it's it's a whole new ball game, you know. Like I've just gone from job to job. Uh, following the role or the steps that I need to get something done. Now it's all on me, you know, mm. I've got to learn a little bit about business as well as uh, promote yourself in a way, mm. you know, uh, you, you got to build yourself from the ground up and so I'm just learning a lot about uh, finances, business supports, how you can take it to the next level mm. um, in terms of how you can get it started mm. and further your growth within your business. Um, I've reached out to, you know, I think that's the, the the big thing is actually just giving it a go, mm. giving it a crack. It took me a year, maybe more, uh, just to get to this point where I am right now. I twiddled my thumbs for a long time, you know, pondering whether I commit or not. And I'd like to try a lot of things just to confirm that this is really what I want to do, and it 100% is. Mm. Um, kind of on that little topic of, you know, everyone has something to offer. I 100% believe everyone has something to offer, and what makes a difference is whether you choose to follow through with 
you know, sharing it or uh, simply just acting upon your thought. Mm. Um, so that, that, was the, that was the biggest hurdle, I think, was just taking that first step. Um, the other things will come later and that's just part of the process, but the first initial part for me was just taking the step and saying, look, this is what I'm going to do. Mm. I'm going to give it a go. If it fails, it fails. If it, you know, if it goes good, it goes good. But depending on the individual, how passionate you are behind it, what your reason is and your motivation for it, you're going to strive to make it uh, be the best you can be regardless mm. of how long it takes. Mm. And I think a lot of people uh, gravitate towards those sort of people, right? The people they can see have a proper passion and they've actually done a little bit of the groundwork and homework and you know they've tried, they've failed, they've, they've uh, molded things where they needed to be molded and I really like what you said there with everyone does have something to offer. Um, I always think about the physics mm. when we talk about you know how energy is neither created nor lost it's always just transformed yeah, um, yeah so I see everyone walking around with potential energy mm. and potential energy like is how much someone can do but until it's actually that first step that you were talking about can it become kinetic energy which yeah. then makes the change so that first step is always the hardest and now you're talking about the launching into it so with your launch what have been some resources or things that have actually helped you besides realizing it within yourself um, that have really given you that you know that extra little bit of uh, courage or something to push you hmm. any resources that you have come across um, yeah like I'm not a master of what I do mm -hmm. I uh, I'm not the best at what I do either I am simply just doing the best I can uh, and with that I'm constantly learning, constantly growing and I think that's a bit of a quite a useful learning thing um, it, it drops your ego a little bit it's letting yourself know that you know you're not the end all and be all mm. you, there's always room to grow regardless of if you're at the top or the better there's people who are trying to always get better are the ones who keep growing and developing and that's the, the main goal um, resources that I believe that you know have helped me is I've found a circle or um, simply approach someone who is in a position that I want to be in. Mm. From there, I go backwards on the steps that they took, mm. uh, and you know take their advice on board. But also within that, you got to find your own way. Mm. Um, following someone else's footsteps is going to get you to where they went. It's not going to get you to where you want to go. Yeah. So you might a good way is to reach out to someone where they're in a position you want to be in, uh, and take their advice on board for many aspects uh, is a good way. Yeah. Um, get multiple feed, feedback loops going, but also from that create your own path. Good man, good man, and that's a nice little segue from there and not following other people's footsteps but you can take the the things that are um, I guess best fit for you in that time so that's kind of how I see optimal optimal is you being able to do the best with the constraints that you have it's not always trying to be like get the best gear and everything because if you're not doing it then it doesn't mean anything yeah um, so now that you you know you've seen you've had the experiences you've seen the different academies you've seen the people that you know, make it you've seen the people that don't make it now what is it that you are offering? So what is it, that, where's your point of difference? Um, what is it that, besides like the overall, so maybe it's talking about some specifics. I know you've just started mm, um, mm. A, a program at the moment. So if you just want to go into a bit of a detail about that. Yes, yeah, so the, I've recently started a rugby development program. Um, and it's simply just, uh, we're doing a, my first one. So obviously going to get learn a lot from it. Um, but going into my first one, I've obviously done my groundwork and my homework knowing that what I'm putting forward is, uh, is going to be quality and it's not just going to be something you find online mm. that they can follow for yourself. So very individualized. Um, getting to know your athletes or your clients is very important. So you need to figure out what their needs are, mm. what their goals are, uh, and slowly work from there. Mm. So I've got a, a young of group guys at the moment who are very interested in coming down to join this program. Mm. Uh, within that, we're just going to have a rugby-specific uh, mm. SNC based program mm. as well as we've linked up with a, a good bunch of lads down the road at Apex Gym, uh, Freaks Jiu Jitsu. Mm. Shouts out to uh, the boys down there, Steve Booth, thank you very much. Um, we've, link, we've been uh, fortunate enough to link up with them where they're going to allow us to bring the Performance Academy boys down there to have a bit of a contact session. Mm. So 
things that are all relative to rugby. Mm. You know, you want to go straight into running all day, into shoulder contact. You know, the, we need to bridge the gap in between uh, with the contact session in mind. We want to, you know, create, you know, full body strength and awareness, um, stability, and use your body as a whole as opposed to just mm. learning how to throw your shoulder into an mm. individual. Yeah, that's a really nice, I guess. Um, a transition point right from the gym and actually going onto the field now because what we can do in the gym is very it's mm. um, people do get injured but it's relatively safe compared to yeah. what you're going to get out there on the field I mean a lot of the injuries are a land so if, say for example it's the knee it's a land and a, uh, a twist and there's an ACL or um, hand out someone runs through and there goes a shoulder now yeah. um, in the gym everything's pretty controlled now mm. I like that you have the jujitsu in there, uh, a little bit of martial arts. Now, obviously, there are teams that do. It's nothing new with the jujitsu, but mm -hmm. I think the philosophy of why you're trying to get into it. So you don't just think about the grappling and the holding and like yes, it's similar to rugby, but mm -hmm. there's other things part of it that you've actually chosen them for. So if you want to just go into a little bit about that. Yeah, so it's all specificity into how we can apply. You know, that's why I was saying before, we're not taking just lifting weights and then going to rugby, you know. We're trying to take good relative aspects from all areas, all sports, all backgrounds into, you know, connecting with those uh, businesses, those clients, those people and trying to put an individual in the best environment for them to help with their, with their goals. Um, you know, I got told a very good piece of advice a while ago and it was, um, you yeah, in terms of rugby terms, it was uh, we don't we don't rugby for the gym. We gym for rugby, and that comes down to you know a little bit of uh, people will overtrain, mm. which is not a a major problem. You've got to put the work in, but you've got to train smart at the same time. We'll often grind grind, grind and uh, wear ourselves out when it comes game day. Mm. We we probably need to uh, take a rest in between, and we won't perform optimally. So it's just providing the best blueprint and platform that we can for people. To achieve the end result. So, do you think the amount of uh, training that these people are going to be doing uh, within your program, you, you're taking into consideration all of the training <coughs> that they're doing, mm -hmm. all of the possible game times? Now, I know that those people who really want to make it, but they haven't quite had that support along the way, will pretty much just you know go balls to the wall because they think that training the hardest that they can and having that David Goggins mentality which is awesome mentality yeah, to have yeah, absolutely. Uh, but the approach if you want to be a spectacular athlete is probably not the best way to go about it so do you think that will come into a lot of what you're doing as well yeah 100% uh, so at the moment with this little program we're looking at doing uh, four strength and conditioning based sessions mm -hmm. in the gym at Propel Fitness whether that be in the gym or we can go simply go down to a track and field mm -hmm. and do things down there. We're not going to be uh, focusing on you know shifting tin a lot of the time. It's going to come down to biomechanics, other aspects, other avenues you know it's not going to be 100% intensity all the time. We need to learn and I want to educate uh, individuals on you know how their body works and how they should be working. The P like our health and peace system that we have and uh, a lot of knowledge that's out there in terms of uh, human function, mm. we don't know enough about it, mm. uh, I believe. So a lot of academies, you know, they get given a program and they're t told to go follow it, but they're not often, they spend enough time actually educating those athletes how to perform movements correctly, mm. uh, which is a pretty big um, problem I, I see. Mm. Yeah, so I, I think that's going to be something that potentially in the next couple of weeks is the uh, it's, it's probably going to show. I mean, we're probably going to have a lot of people who were, you know, during the lockdown following programs and then coming back into the gym saying, yes, they followed the program, but then obviously not performing or uh, showing a level of deconditioning that probably showed they didn't quite uh, grasp the concepts or mm. lying. And that comes down to relationships. Um, so that relationship that you're able to build with these people. So... Um, do you think, this is just an off the cuff question, I'm just listening to what you're saying and I'm just feeling like there's such a human element to what you're doing. Do you think what is being done here could ever just be replaced by you know, people pretty much working online or just, you know, I put in my details, get my program, go for it? Yeah, I, from there, I there's already something like that, you know, you can buy programs online and get it done. But what we've touched on in the past is you lose that human element to it. You don't actually have an individual there you know, keeping you accountable, making sure you're doing things correctly. Mm. Yes, there are resources, like particularly YouTube, that you can uh, watch 
uh, videos on and learn more about it and that's great um, if that's what you choose to do you know that it definitely is an aspect of learning mm. but it is great to when you've got so many things on your plate uh, you know at particularly at this age um, you know you, you, whether you're trying to figure out what your life goal is what you want to achieve mm. um, you're starting fresh at uni you're meeting new people you just finished school there's a lot going on probably one of the last things you want to do is focus on uh, you know you want to just take a little bit of a back seat be told what to do uh, with the knowledge behind it knowing that it's going to be uh, beneficial for you and it's going to be quality mm. and that um, there's also that aspect of people coming in and you know they're not going to be honest in a program or if if we're only showing numbers and we're not actually showing why these numbers are showing mm. up the way they are yeah. and if you have that good relationship you can, you can actually be honest about why this is happening like I'm not sleeping well at home and you can yeah. start to address those sorts of things <clears throat> so um, so you think that oh. yeah, yeah just with that yeah. Yeah, sorry to interrupt like uh, like numbers just show results you know that it's, you know that in terms of maybe that's a strength aspect or a physical aspect what about those other aspects that we're talking about before mm. like the mental and emotional spiritual aspects you know there's that connection yes you have someone um you know helping you through your program and then you can do that vice versa online or whatever but with gaining an individual you maybe can trust mm. and have with you with you through your career or just have always have someone to lean back on that's valuable mm. um you know it, it is worth finding someone who you you know look up to or you admire or um who can help you achieve what you want to achieve and have those, them in your circle constantly that you can keep feeding back off mm. you can flick them a message every now and then you can't get that when you just buy a program online mm. yeah for sure man it's um i think it's extremely valuable whether people are going into training uh, or tr trying to train people themselves or if they are trying to find someone to train with you know there is that human element that we touch on nearly every single week um, but it's necessary because I still think people want the fastest answer mm. um, and the fastest answer is not through cookie cutter programs now just getting into the programming side of things so uh, anyone who follows yourself on the old Instagram you you post up uh, really good mobility and uh, mobility and you know, working through different ranges of motion and you get into flows I mm. just want to have a little bit of a spiel about that yeah it's me just being curious I love I love to move around it's exploring my range of motion and that's kind of what mobility is you know it's going through full range and full range of motion through a joint mm. uh, that, that's mobility but it's me moving in various patterns uh, people often you know, might look at it and go this looks a bit weird or they might fi find it fascinating mm. um, but it's me just exploring myself, seeing what I can do. You know, it's constantly pushing my boundaries or um, keeping me um, learning in a way. The more you move, the more you learn. Um, not all movement is good movement, but some is better than none, as uh, you have said before in the past. I like that. Nice. That's um, that's a really good point, and I think exploring your own self. I mean, in everything that you're going to be mm. doing, if you're pushing towards the limits, um, but with control. Obviously, not uh, just always pushing yourself to the limits, yeah. but if you're pushing yourself, like guided, um, I guess a push towards your upper limit of anything, you're going to find where you do need your help. Yeah. Um, and with that different, like with the different mobility flows that you're doing, do you have a feeling if everyone just did that, right? If we stop focusing on how much weight we can lose and we just start exploring our ranges of motion, mm. do you feel like that should be where everyone's going? Well, yeah, well, it's definitely a good um, f first steps into the fundamentals, mm. you know. Um, the more you can, uh, it, it's a challenge essentially, you know. Mm. Even body weight is, you know, calisthenics is the big body, one, body weight kind of uh, approach out there. But the more you can get to learn how to move your body, how it feels in certain situations. Um, I'm not a, you know, I'm not amazing. I, I, I struggle. I have my daily hip problems and spine problems that a lot of people have out there just through wear and tear and uh, uh, tightness this year which we're all trying to improve but um, the reason I do it you know try to move do that every day is for longevity knowing that it will help me in the long run what I love about physical activity is or exercise it's more to it than just the short term mm. you do it now it helps you in the long term it's amazing so 
just to touch up on a few things, you know, osteoporosis is the big one. As we get older, our bone density um, becomes weaker. You know, we become quite frail, we fall over, we break our bones. Mm. With strength training or training in general, uh, or some kind of training that forms uh, resistance or impact, it will, you know, decrease the rate of osteoporosis, mm. uh, which will allow us to enjoy life mm. a lot longer. Mm. Uh, this is, that's something I just find amazing. You know, if you want to put it, and that there's needs that we need for a human body and exercise movement 100% is one, and I think we should be doing every day. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then uh, additionally to, to uh, osteoporosis is sarcopenia as well so like just atrophy of muscle and being able to maintain that so now we're talking general uh, mm. we're, try, we're trying to get other people into more physical activity now like we said um, not all physical activity is going to be good for everyone um, but trying to do something that we can achieve now if we were to prioritise I, I don't like to think black and white here I don't like to think we should do this rather than that but when most people do start to get into physical activity, the first thing they think about is like going for a run. Mm. Right now, what you touched on there with resistance training is that being something that probably most people should be doing more often. Uh, what are your thoughts around actually prepping or like getting everyone into resistance training? It doesn't it can just be off the cuff? Yeah, just... like uh, I think a big part of why we should train mm. uh, and why gyms were kind of invented is, you know, we're lazy. <laughs> you know, back in the day, we were hunter-gatherers, you know. We had to go out, scavenge, cross multiple terrains. We had to go miles and miles to, to feed ourselves with, for our family and come back. Mm. We had to do a lot of uh, hard labour just to get things. Now we have so much technology that does things for us, you know. Washing, you think back in the day, we had to go walk down to the river. We had to manually scrub our clothes, mm. uh, come back up, etc. Um, we were hopping a car. You know, so you wake up in the morning, you sit down, you have your breakfast, you, you drive to work, you sit down in the office. Mm. We do a lot of uh, static sitting, which is a big issue. Mm. Um, you know, there's multiple things we can do out there to help that, you know, reduce the amount of time you sit, be, be more active more often, uh, move more. But also, you know, with the gym, that's why it's there. It's mm. to help us accommodate for a lack of... Uh, for a lack of movement and in the increasing technology, mm. in my perspective anyway. Mm. Um, what I think about how we can at least start, you know, running, you know, do what you want to do, yeah. you know, follow what you want to do. Like, there's no, there, there's no, not so, not so right, right or wrong, mm. but there is definitely things we can do better. Mm. Um, the best thing you can do is to start. Mm. Regardless of what is right or wrong, simply start, take the first step, uh, and you will grow from there. Mm. The more you do something, the more you learn. Mm. If you're not going to take that first step, you're never going to learn. Absolutely, man. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so just from here, what I like to do at the end, uh, and we talked about it basically through this entire podcast, but we've just, um, I like to see what people like yourself who are trying to promote this sort of thing or in any area where they're just really trying to better themselves, what are some, like a few uh, daily or almost daily practices that you do that try to keep you in check? All right. Um, there's always things I'm trying to grasp to help me become better. Mm. Something I do continuously, continuously daily is uh, some sort of exercise of movement. Mm. Something I like to do because I'm fortunate enough to be in a facility where I uh, have a little bit of space I can move around mm. is I get my, my daily mobility in. Mm. Whether it be big or small, some is better than none. Uh, what things I focus on are my, my big uh, joints. So. Uh, you know, your ankles, hips, mm. knees, spine, shoulders. I do some form of protocol or some sort of warm up uh, daily. So, just taking my joints through full range of motion. I like the concept of uh, meditation. I don't do it enough as much as I should, um, but I do what I can, you know. Um, yeah, you might be. You know, struggling to get five or ten minutes in, you might be comparing yourself to someone who's doing it daily for half an hour a day or ten minutes a day, and you might only be getting a couple of minutes in a week. But learning on yourself on how you can do better um, and just doing what you can is always the best. Mm. Um, you know, positive thinking. I'm learning a lot, a lot of the mental aspect at the moment. So the more like what I find where I am currently is. Uh, you know, my mental journey, mm. you know, is uh, thinking positively, surrounding myself with, you know, positivity, good environments, 
believing in myself, mm. uh, a little bit of mental skills training, mm. which carries over to other aspects that we do throughout the life and, uh, and other avenues we do. So just constantly trying to reevaluate myself, mm. self-reflection, and just being honest, telling the truth, and just overall just trying to be a better person, like best person I can be each day. I, I make a lot of mistakes all the time. Every day I'm not perfect. But if I can slowly take one of those things away or just slowly get a tiny, tiny bit better in one of any aspect I can do, uh, to me, that's something I try to do daily. Mm. So just with regards to meditation now, I think a lot of people do have this preconceived notion that you sit there, you hum, you light incense, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> but meditation is really, uh, it can be any form that someone feels where they're finally like being able to be aware of themselves. Now, yeah. It's something that I'm still practicing a lot and I've been doing it for years, but I still like feel like I'm not even getting the benefits from it uh, or like 100% of the benefits from it. So like, what are some ways that you kind of tactically get into it? Yeah. Um, Right, so I'm not, like I said, I'm not a, a yogi or a master in uh, <laughs> meditation or breathing, but I at least give it a go and I uh, am lear- willing to learn. Mm. Uh, some things I do is I have a very good friend called Fraser Beck or Yoga Athletic Science. He has a beautiful business coming up called Optimal Health Model. Uh, go check him out. He is a one of the best humans I know and uh, definitely he's got some big things coming in the future. And that's not me just trying to throw a plug out there. I truly believe he's going to take... The, uh, the human human performance, human development, whatever you want to call it, he's, take, he's doing big things and he's going to shake up the world with, it, with the thinking that he does and the, the approach that he's going to take. It's huge. Um, so I've been learning a lot of him. Mm. Uh, it, simply, also he takes some uh, people who are quite familiar with Wim Hof, potentially he's uh, one of the bigger names out there. He simply just says, start breathing. Mm. Whether it's through the mouth, the nose, you just simply need to start breathing and create more awareness through your breath. Um, Something I like to do is, because we are predominantly nasal-based breathers, so through the nose, I like to inhale, inhale, and exhale, so breathing in, breathing out through the nose, trying to stretch my breath, Um, simply just trying to create more awareness Mm. in that, and that right there is enough uh, to begin. With that, you should hopefully be able to clear your mind. So yeah, you can breathe and you know your thoughts can still keep going, but if the idea is to concentrate on your breath. So simply just sit in there. Relaxing, everything comes. It almost feels like you bring yourself down in the way you've... I can already tell my voice as soon as I started talking again. I was quite excited before. I'm excited to be here, but it's that sense of... Uh, calmness mm. it brings to it which I think is very val- valuable mm. for people who potentially suffer from anxiety mm. or uh, have some self um, help me out here what am I thinking so you know just a little bit of anxiety and some kind of overwhelmed uh, situation you know if you're you know, getting quite you know overwhelmed with the situation your ability to be more efficient mm. and being in the moment and calming yourself down is uh, very valuable. Mm. Yeah, it's something I've always believed in. Uh, if we were all just living in the now, there would be a lot less, uh, I guess, anger and mm. people acting out of uh, hate for one another because they've taken that moment to just be like, oh, I'm here, I'm, you know, everything is actually fine. And uh, we're quite bad multitaskers, most people are. So if you just focus on the breath, all of those thoughts, there's thousands of thoughts going on. If we just have to then focus it somewhere else, you yeah. quickly, uh, just all those different things will kind of categorize themselves now um where can people find you and what are you offering in the next couple of months all right listen up ladies and gentlemen (laughs) you can find me at propel fitness uh here in dedean princess street or you can simply find me on instagram at performance academy underscore nz i'm pretty free spirit kind of guy i'm very open if you just send me a message saying good day i want to learn a bit about this i want to learn about that whether I know it or not, I'll try help out in any aspect I can. Whether I can uh, give you some advice or point you in the right direction that is uh, something I'm really willing to do and help out. Um, man, like, get started. You know, come reach out if you're struggling with anything, regardless of it. You know, if it's, you know, if you're struggling with anything, reach out to someone. It's a huge aspect. Whether it is, you know, close friend, close family. You know, if, if you're going through something or if you want to get started, you know, 
maybe tell someone mm. you know it's good to get your thoughts off your mind but also it creates a little bit of uh, accountability mm. you know uh, getting off your mind is great but telling it to someone is even better mm. ladies and gentlemen that has been our man mr marty mckenzie performance academy check it out uh, either on the instagram or if you are around propel fitness he will be floating around somewhere there um, a really insightful chat about human development and discovering human potential and i think we're just looking at overall uh, flourishing of humans right we have the athlete that we do focus so strongly on with strength and conditioning uh, but here we're actually looking at developing someone who will then go on and be a better person in every aspect of their lives Mr. Marty McKenzie, it's no. been an honour having you on. Awesome, no, thank you for having me, Troy, and uh, thank you to Sick As Podcast. You're doing amazing things, keep it up. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Love you. Cheers, boy.